In this video, we'll break down the concept of frequency separation, explore its real-world applications, and introduce an innovative new tool that makes the process even easier. What is a frequency? Let's start with terminology using fences as an example. Fences can be dense or sparse. Frequency describes how often something occurs within a certain interval. In sound, this interval is time, and frequency is the number of oscillations per second. In space, it could be a meter, with frequency representing how many fence boards fit within that meter. In photography, pixels are the unit of measurement, but within a single pixel, nothing can repeat. So it's more convenient to use the inverse value, the period. The higher the frequency, the smaller the period. In other words, the more frequently the boards appear, the higher the frequency and the fewer pixels there are between them. Most things don't consist of just a single frequency. Even a fence has two frequencies. Posts appear rarely, low frequency, while boards between them appear frequently, high frequency. It is often useful to work with these frequencies separately, handling low and high frequencies independently. This is called frequency separation of the fence. Humans naturally perceive things by breaking them down into frequencies. While this is well studied in light and sound, it remains less obvious in images. With the development of convolutional neural networks, researchers discovered that neural networks process visual information similarly to human vision. This suggests that we also perceive images at different scales, meaning at different frequencies. You've probably noticed this while retouching. If you work at a fixed zoom level for a long time and then zoom out, you suddenly see completely different defects. This means you were correcting flaws at one frequency while others escaped your perception. That's why artists step away from their paintings while working and why retouchers zoom in and out. Your vision processes different information at different frequencies. The French mathematician Joseph Fourier proposed a method to decompose signals into frequencies, which works well for sound, but has not yet been widely applied in photography. Meanwhile, there are simpler ways to adjust frequency balance. In sound, analog filters and equalizers are used. In photography, just putting on or removing glasses can blur small details. This means we can extract low frequency information separately. To obtain high frequency information, we subtract the low frequency component from the original image, leaving only the high frequencies in the difference. We've prepared a sound and an image that clearly contain both low and high frequencies. Low frequency has large waves in sound and large circular patterns in the image. High frequency has fine random oscillations in sound and noise in the image. We will use a sound equalizer and apply the same process in a photo equalizer, so you can see how similar they are. Almost everyone has used a sound equalizer, found in stereos, music apps, and more. Photographers, however, lack comparable tools for frequency manipulation. Photoshop provides two main frequency filters. Gaussian Blur removes high frequencies, making it a low-pass filter. High-pass preserves high frequencies, making it a high-pass filter. But where are the band-pass and band-reject filters? It turns out that many retouching techniques, like inverted high-pass and various skin retouching plugins, are actually band-pass or band-reject filters in disguise. Let's explore how an equalizer works. Most people have seen graphic equalizers. Older stereos often had three bands, bass, low frequencies, mids, mid frequencies, treble, high frequencies. For professionals, equalizers have more bands, sometimes 10 or even 31. Why so many? Because graphic equalizers have fixed frequency bands. If you want to adjust, say 400 Hertz, but it falls between two sliders, you won't be able to precisely control it. To solve this, parametric equalizers were invented. Here's a three-band parametric equalizer. Unlike a graphic equalizer, it allows you to adjust not just the gain, but also the frequency itself. This means you don't need dozens of sliders. You can smoothly adjust the exact frequency you need. You can even control the bandwidth, the range of frequencies affected. 
However, parametric equalizers have a downside. Their knob-based interface makes it unclear how exactly they shape the sound spectrum. With music shifting to digital, the ideal equalizer emerged. A parametric equalizer with a visual frequency curve. Its interface resembles the curves tool in Photoshop. The left side represents low frequencies. Bass. The right side represents high frequencies. Treble. The horizontal axis is labeled in Hertz. Now let's apply this concept to retouching. First, open a photo you want to retouch and duplicate the layer. Then open Frequency Separation. The photo equalizer follows the same layout as a sound equalizer. Left, low frequencies, large structures. Right, high frequencies, fine details, sharp edges. Instead of hertz, the scale is in pixels, similar to a blur radius. For convenience, we added a mute and solo buttons. Mute disables a frequency band, like lowering an equalizer slider. Solo isolates a frequency band so you can preview it separately. Let's see how different image effects work. To increase sharpness, raise the high frequencies. You can also adjust the radius. To simulate a soft focus, reduce the mid and high frequencies without eliminating them completely. To enhance texture, like the Clarity tool in Lightroom, boost mid frequencies. Skin retouching using inverted high pass method is essentially removing mid frequencies. In Photoshop, Frequency separation involves splitting an image into two layers. The low frequency layer contains smoother color transitions, skin blemishes. The high frequency layer contains fine details, skin texture. To smooth skin, some retouchers use mixer brush, while others apply a blur. Either way, they remove high frequencies from the low frequency layer, but since we've already separated high frequencies, increasing the blur radius removes mid frequencies instead. By fine tuning the radius, you can selectively remove blemishes while preserving natural skin texture. Bringing back the high frequencies, we can see the before and after difference. This proves that skin smoothing through frequency separation is equivalent to removing mid frequencies. For more precise adjustments and better detail enhancement on the skin, use the threshold parameter. Of course, this effect is not applied to the entire image, but is selectively revealed using masks and additional tools in Photoshop. Now just click the Apply button to apply the settings to the photo, or enable Make Layers to save the three frequency layers. Now, in the Layers panel, in addition to the original image, we also have Frequency Layers. These are what we'll be working with. To make retouching more convenient, add a black and white adjustment layer and select the High Contrast Blue Filter preset in its properties. Additionally, add a Curves adjustment layer with the Strong Contrast preset. This will help reveal more details during the editing process. Let's examine what each frequency layer contains. The high frequency layer holds fine skin texture. The mid frequency layer contains skin irregularities. The low frequency layer consists of colors and tones. To remove blemishes, we'll work on the mid frequency layer. Click on the layer and create a mask. Then, using a brush, start cleaning up the skin. Next, move to the Low Frequency layer. Here, I'll use the Clone Stamp or Patch tool to correct larger color inconsistencies. If needed, repeat a similar process on the High Frequency layer to refine details further. 
Frequency separation gives complete control over the image, allowing texture and colors to be adjusted separately. Now photographers can use an equalizer just like musicians tune sound. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.